Hi folks, this is Anne with the second in this week's um, videos on drawing this line of circles. Um, this problem wants us to draw five equal circles across the canvas, whatever the size of the canvas is. And a um, couple of things, we, um, where we left off before is we have a nice minimal set of files. This is the circle code from um, the previous week. And we know that we can make circles um, anywhere on the screen and of a size and whatever color we want. So um, we have some draw code here, but the instructions for the uh, exercise say that we are supposed to um, call this draw touching.js. So I'm going to copy that off the slide, move over here and um, click on, on that name so that I can replace it. it becomes draw touching.js. Remember, once you've um, done that, you definitely have to come over here to your index.html and rename the code that you're including. And this would be a good point to go ahead and change this so you don't um, forget to make this. I'm working with Ollie the Owl tonight. Um, Pete's at my office, Ollie's, Ollie's at home, and this is AG's touching circle. And then you know when you run it and you come over to the page that I have up and you refresh it, that you're running what you think you are. So labels and colors can be really useful just as sanity checks in terms of making sure you know you're running exactly what you think you're running. So um, let's get started here and just take these requirements one step at a time. Um, I think the first part of this, draw five equal size touching circles across the width of your canvas, that's intended to be pretty well illustrated by this picture. Um, we know we're going to need a for loop, and we need, we're going to need to calculate the x location, because I think we just have to decide a y location, put these guys at different x locations across. But um, actually, the very first thing we need to do is calculate the radius based on the canvas width and the number of circles. So let's go back to the code and do that much. Um, we're in draw touching, OK? And um, the Slide specifies that our num circles is equal to five. And we want to figure out what the radius is. So let's just talk about that. If we have five circles across, then the canvas width, each circle takes up one fifth of that. But if you recall, the size that we use for our drawing code is the radius. So half of the um, half of the diameter. So if I want to calculate my radius, um, it is my canvas width. Remember, canvas is an object and it has properties, and one of those properties is width. Um, and we want to divide it by our number of circles times, times two. Okay, so if we wanted to have, if we were calculating the diameter, we'd take the width and divide it by five. But since we are calculating the radius, we need to divide it by the number of circles times two. So in this case, we'll get a tenth of the width. That's the radius. Um, let's, let's do this. Let's go ahead and just assign a sort of arbitrary y um, and make it canvas height divided by three maybe, so it's it's not right at the top of the canvas. Um, I don't care if you want to make it canvas height divided by two, whatever. And then our very first, and let's just, we've written three lines of code, let's test those three lines of code. So let's make a point where 
we have a Y location. So wherever that is on our canvas, all of our circles are gonna have the same Y location. And then let's just see, let's just draw this first circle. So what do we know about that? We know that the left edge is zero and the center of the first circle is one radius over. So that the point which we will use for the center of that circle is at X location radius, Y location, whatever we decided to make it. And we want to have a circle, um, let's keep calling this circle one just for simplicity, and I'm even going to take this line of logging out. And um, it's going to be at point two. We're going to simplify the code later when we begin to put it into a for loop. It's of size radius. And just to match the um, slide, which you don't have to do, but I happen to like purple, so I will. Um, I have I have a new circle at point two radius, whatever we calculated, and it's purple. So let's just see if that much code runs. Um, I've actually written probably more code than I would normally like to do um, before I test it. Um, so be sure to test early and often. So if I come over here and I shift refresh, I sure hope a purple circle pops up, and if it doesn't, we'll deal with it. Okay, so there's a purple circle that pops up, um, nicely touching the left edge. And clearly, one thing we could do is we could um, if all we ever wanted to do was five circles of this size, we could create another point, call it three, um, somewhere, radius, we'll have to figure that out. We could create a circle two, and let's just for this purpose make this one blue, just so we can tell circle two from circle one. We can log it and we can ask it to draw itself and if we run that okay we can see we're creating two circles we're only seeing one because they're one on top of each other so if if this circle's x distance from the edge is r, then if we want to do a whole nother circle and we want it to touch this one, we'd need one radius, two radius over. So what the heck, why don't we just make 0.3 be um, three times radius. Save that, redraw it, and that's not working because, oh, yeah, it helps to actually use the point that you just calculated, doesn't it? When they're in the same location, it doesn't matter nearly as much. Okay, so again, if we wanted to, we could just draw the circles, but that's not what we've been asked to do in the slide. What we've been asked to do in the slide is calculate the X location for each circle as a function of a loop index and a and the circle radius. So let's come back here and I'm going to I'm going to get I will eventually get rid of this code but first I'm going to copy it because after all I'm a programmer and programmers are lazy. So this is a conventional loop there's no particular reason to start it at anything but zero. Um, we want to make uh, it run until i is less than five. Okay, so that'll give us five circles. And I want to, inside there, I want to create a point. And let's just copy this. Let's just copy this much code. Um, and I'm going to do some name changing. Okay. Um, Okay, so right now we have a, we're creating a point. We're creating a circle. Let's just call it generically circle. Okay, and its center is point. And 
we want to log it so we can sort of see where it is. And we want to draw it. Okay. And um, what the heck, I'm going to go ahead and comment this code out for now. I want to get rid of it later, but I may need to refer back to it if for some reason what I just wrote isn't working. So let's be a little conservative in terms of that. And so now I have a loop that's going to run five times. It's going to get, it's going to create five point, it's going to create point five times, it's going to create circle five times. And let's see if that much works. Um, shift refresh, sorry. Okay. And uh, Chrome is trying to do me the favor of not showing me five of these because they're identical. So, um, why don't we do something? We want to keep moving forward. And while we're figuring out exactly, exactly where this, really, this whole exercise um, centers on calculating this value, the x value for each new point correctly. Let's do this. Let's do a var x location is equal to something. And since we know we have to use the loop index, why don't we just start by experimenting with radius times i. And now instead of that, we'll have an x location and a y location for each point. And the x location each time will be different. So let's see what we got. Okay, and then make some progress. We're getting one, two, three, four, five circles. Uh, oddly, the first one is no longer out here. So notice how it, here, let me change this to make it easier to see. Let's just make one with a loop. Okay, save that for a minute. Now let's just take a look at that first circle. Okay. Now, the first circle, when we multiply radius by i, well, the first time through the loop, i is zero. So the radius is, um, is off by, you know, our x location is zero when we want it to be radius. And so we have two choices. Um, one is we could cheat and maybe do i plus one. Um, which would work. Uh, let's do parentheses just to make that clear. Okay. And that does move that over. Um, but it doesn't really solve our problem because if we go back to doing five circles, I think they still will overlap. Okay, so our other choice for how to, how to get the original um, radius over far enough is say that we're going to multiply radius by i every time, but then we also have to adjust by a factor of one radius. So that the first one is zero plus radius, and then the next one is one radius over every time. Okay, so now we have our first circle in the right place, but notice that instead of touching this circle, if we, um, if we did have a line around it, if we were drawing a stroke with, say, black, we would see that it's touching the circle. So um, what we really want is right now, the center of this circle is at R, and this one is at 2R, or R plus r plus one more r, and we want it to really be over one more. So why don't we do radius times two? Because we've, we've seen that before where we want to use a diameter. So this is really, this part is really i times the diameter, and then everything shifted over one radius. I probably should have started saying that sooner. Okay, so if you look at this, and hang on, the canvas, that really is filling up the canvas. So you want the first circle 
to be over 1R. And then every other circle, the X location needs to be one diameter, which is 2R over. So that would probably be a little clearer if we rewrote this as I times 2 times R. Okay. So you're seeing that your X location is the in loop index times the radius, and then everything shifted one radius over. We should get the same picture here. Now, if you look at the hint um, picture at the end of the slide deck, which, let me show you this one. Okay, that's essentially what the hint picture is trying to indicate, is that the first circle is over one radius, and then every other circle needs to be over two radii or a diameter. And the other thing I guess we should look at, and we're seeing that the X's are at 60, 180, 300, 425, 40. So what I don't want you to be doing is using those numbers. Because what you really want to do is be able to write code that if the, if the next step in this task was, okay, now do it for 20 circles. And I just save that. Yep. Hang on. Oh, <laughs> I have a defect in this code. Hang on a sec. I have a hard-coded five. Let me control Z that. Um, okay, so I have num circles there, and I made the mistake that when I wrote this loop, I hard-coded my five in here. And what I really want to do is use num circles. So if I run that, I get my five big circles back. And then let's just try changing it to 10, so they won't be so tiny. So if I change num circles by 10 now, and I use num circles for the loop limit, so let me save that. Then I have code that's much more versatile, and I can do as many touching circles as I want. So apologize for that, that was a defect. Um, not contrived, I just forgot to do that. So let's go and clean this all up. Get rid of this old point code. Okay, and I think that's enough for, for of a hint. I'm hoping that, um, let me save that. Run it one more time. Okay, and the next part of the exercise is, okay, for you with that much of a start, to make sure to write a second version of the code, draw space.js, um, by copying over the first one. Okay, you need to you need to calculate a new radius. Okay, because what you're trying to do is make five circles, each with one radius after it on the page, fit on the page. Hope you have good luck with that. Thanks for listening.